Let's go back to game two of the Western Conference Finals. The Lakers have led most of the game, but the Nuggets have inched to within two. Jamal Murray's been struggling all night, missing 12 of his 17 attempts, but he snakes around a screen and double clutches a little floater. Still trailing by two, Murray finds a little pocket on the other side of his screen and rises up to give Denver the lead. With two-time MVP Nikola Jokic resting on the bench, Denver stalls early in the possession. Jeff Green passes on a three, and when Murray gets it back, he's matched up with Anthony Davis and just lets an arrow fly from deep, and now Denver's up four. With a bit of a lather going, Jamal says, why not try something even harder? So with the shot clock dwindling, he pulls up from 30 over LeBron and rips it, and suddenly Denver's up nine. A minute later, it's full heat check mode, grabbing a handoff, and that's a 14-point detonation in five minutes to swing the game. Or, as Mike Breen would say, Jamal Murray went. <laughs> All told, Murray dropped 23 in the fourth quarter, but that wasn't the first time he's exploded in the playoffs to turn a game for the Nuggets. If anything, these Murray avalanches have become the norm in the playoffs for him, where he turns into something more than just Denver's second best player. Back in 2020, the Nuggets made a surprising run through the bubble to the Western Finals, with Murray emerging as a second star alongside Jokic. He then missed the next two postseasons, recovering from an ACL tear, but in the 2023 playoffs, he's picked up right where he left off. We already discussed the power of his two-man game with Jokic during the Phoenix series, but since the bubble, Denver's had a seven-point jump in their playoff offensive rating when Murray joins Jokic on the floor because their skill sets interact organically. To begin with, Jamal is a good movement shooter, meaning he can dart around without the ball like this, then run to catch a pass, square, and fire in one motion. This pairs perfectly with Jokic's handoff game around the top of the key, where Murray can cut across the middle of the floor into high percentage threes, or he can start on the baseline, fly up for the catch, and turn and shoot comfortably as well. His defender was buried on that screen, and that left too much space for a shooter like Murray. So on the very next possession, the Lakers decide to take away that handoff by switching the screen, and that triggers Jokic's passing on the slip. When you're worried about Murray tossing it to Jokic and chasing it for a handoff, they can counter with a flare to the corner where Jamal drifts into a warm-up jumper. And this is where passing and movement synergize, because this defender can't immediately jump out to Murray because Jokic will hit the screener cutting to the hoop. Jamal is a good enough cutter that he can flip it to Nicola and fake a handoff to go back door, then pass on the move when the defense collapses. So their two-man game creates a ton of read and react options. Murray screens here, then curls right around the handoff into a good look from three. So the next time they run the same play, Murray's defender is glued to him, and he just drives into space and kicks it back to Jokic, who attacks the closeout for a foul. A minute later, they run pick and roll with the ball in Murray's hands. He takes the empty space on the baseline and goes off one leg Dirk style. Then on the very next trip, they isolate for Jokic in the post. Murray walks his man to the elbow for a beautiful cut and handoff into a floating jumper on the baseline. All this means Denver can run actions where Jokic screens and Murray is the ball handler, or they can run identical versions where Jokic has the ball and Murray is activated in the handoff game. And that's amazing touch to arc it over Anthony Davis. The Nuggets will even use Murray as the screener because Jokic is so good with the ball. And here a second screen frees him up and it's another great look. Later in Game 3, they went back to that inverted pick and roll, and because Murray is such a threat to shoot on the move, two defenders jump at him, and that's way too easy for Jokic. So now the Lakers are worried about Joker's shooting, and when they run it the next time down, both defenders linger on him, and he just bounces it down to Murray, and it's another creative finish. 
but Jamal can make the exact same play when he has the ball, drawing two defenders to his dangerous shot, only to thread it back to Jokic. And that's the thing. Murray is good enough as a primary pick and roll weapon to carve up defenses by himself. If a big man gives him too much defensive attention, he can make the pocket pass and Jokic can finish. But he also knows how to use those massive screens, setting his man up perfectly to be picked off so he can unleash his own long range offense. This one is really masterful against Josh Akogi, slamming on the brakes to fake a crossover right, and that gets Akogi scrambling around the screen, so Murray goes right anyway, which draws the big man, so he flicks it back to Joker for the rainbow. Yes. Since Jokic is such a great finisher, teams rarely ever trap Murray in these situations. This one opens up a 40 plus percent three, or sending two to Murray like this will free up the Joker as a short roll passer, which is a total disaster for the defense. But Murray can play his game without Jokic, using ball screens to set up his pull up three, or playing a less effective two-man game with someone else, running his guy around a bunch of handoffs before a moment of brilliance springs him for a Jordan-esque mid-ranger. He showed off the handle on that one, and he'll flash some high-level dribbling moves here and there, but so much of his success comes from how many different ways he can get into his shot. Instead of snaking around and stepping back to his left, this time it's the same shot going right, and notice how he hops and turns himself in mid-air. This time he comes off the screen, slows down, and watch his feet tap dance into a little push shot, but he can also fly around a screen, slam on the brakes, and step back into a perfect three. Shots like that take a ton of strength, and Jamal's a big guard, pushing 6'4 barefoot, so he can take opponents to the post for twisting fadeaways like this, and he'll combine these two moves, driving into the paint to decelerate before pivoting back over that right shoulder. I love his footwork and use of pivots on these, and he's big enough to fire over wings. And this time he comes off the screen, pauses to move the second defender, then goes to the old up and under move, and Murray practices all of these off-balance leaning shots with his right and left hand. Again, look at the footwork on some of these, going to a jump stop, 180 pivot, and then finishing with the left. His game has this bending, flowing quality about it that reminds me of that Bruce Lee quote about water, where he's constantly moving, hopping, or spinning to bend around the defense. When you add up all of the different ways he gets off shots without the ball, Murray has a robust scoring package full of counters that leave playoff defenses at the mercy of his shot making. In the last two postseasons, he's made 49% of his mid-range shots, 6% ahead of the league, and he's even better from deep, drilling 43% of his threes. Larger samples suggest he's not quite that good, but he's been at 40% from three in his last two regular seasons, and he's an 87% career free throw shooter, so he is certainly elite from the outside. He's actually increased his offensive load in the playoffs, possessing the ball 40% of the time Denver's on offense, which ranks fifth in the league. The one downside of that is that he can over dribble at times looking for a shot, which will stall out the possession, but Murray's shot making is so good that when nothing is there, he can still fall back on something viable. And this is the key to his volcanic explosions, elite shooting, highly diverse scoring, and a Shaolin focus to enter a sort of basketball fugue state. In 2020, he averaged 47 points a game in a three game stretch in the Utah series, the third most points ever across three playoff games. And to put into perspective how hot he was, when Jerry West averaged 48 in a three game stretch, he needed 40 more scoring attempts than Murray. And when Michael Jordan did it, he needed 32 more. 
when Jamal catches fire, you'll see all the moves. One-legged runners, step-back threes, floaters, and more. His latest explosion helps swing Game 3 in the Western Finals, pouring in 30 points in the first half while Jokic struggled to score. After coming off a screen, he peeled back for a long jumper. He took a smaller guard to the post and hit him with that MJ fadeaway. We saw the drive into a pivot and fade from the top of the key. And against Anthony Davis, a stone-cold pull-up from the wing. And that shooting then opens up his off-ball cutting game. And all that scoring opens up playmaking opportunities. And suddenly he's manipulating LeBron James by no looking it to the corner for a wide open three. And you do not want to be guarding this guy when he starts talking to himself. Somehow, Jamal Murray has never made an all-star team, but he's quite clearly Denver's other star. He just averaged 33 points per game on 65% true shooting in the conference finals. He even made some key defensive plays while holding his own on that end. And when he's playing like this, he'll single-handedly swing playoff games, and he makes the Nuggets offense basically unstoppable. If you want to work in basketball, I have the place for you. It's Sports Business Classroom's immersive program inside Summer League in Las Vegas. Past instructors in this program have included Commissioner Adam Silver, Mike D'Antoni, and tons of other industry leaders in the NBA and in media. Sign up using the code GREATDAY for $300 off. There's more information in the description box below if you are interested. To directly support this channel, check out patreon.com slash thinkingbasketball. We have our live monthly Q&A coming up along with our playoff stat board where you can see just how highly Murray ranks in some of these playoff performances. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching this one all the way through. And of course, I hope you're having a great day.